All right. So uh, this activity that we're going to um, we're going to watch uh, this particular video, and then at the end or the conclusion of this video, you're going to be doing some review problems from uh, the first semester. I'm going to hit the highlights of the first semester in terms of some of the bigger ideas that we studied, and it's a way to kick off second semester with um, again a quick review of the big ideas from first semester. <clears throat> Starts with. Our, um, our discussion of the three major functions that we study in algebra, linear functions, quadratic functions, and exponential functions. And so if you look here on the, um, on the screen, we provided three tables of values along with the work to assist in determining what type of function each table represents. And it was noted that um, when you look at tables, you're looking for patterns. And you can see that table one, table two, and table three have different patterns. Each of them represents one of the three functions, linear, quadratic, or exponential. So for instance, table number one. In table number one, you'll see that the difference from the Y coordinates as you go down from negative one to two to five to eight to 11, you're adding three each time. That was the pattern. And for that particular table, this represents, if you recall, a linear function. Table number two. Table number two didn't appear to have a pattern. And in that what we call the first difference from two to eight, you added six from eight to 18, you added 10. And from 18 to 32, you added 14, etc. You didn't seem to have pattern but if you recall if you look past the first difference and look closer at the second difference you notice that the second difference the second difference produced a pattern of adding four and that function anybody remember what that was called yep if you said quadratic you would have selected the right function and so a quadratic function you're looking for the pattern that's in the second difference. Okay, and then table number three, similar to table number one, you saw the pattern from the very beginning, except this pattern, you were multiplying, you were multiplying from one Y coordinate to another. One times three is three, three times three is nine, nine times three is 27. And so we call this function an exponential function. And when you're given a table, this is exactly the process you would go through to determine whether you have linear, quadratic, or exponential. And so um, the question then becomes, what, what do their graphs look like? Well, their graphs look like this. I've listed four, five, and six. These are pictures of the three functions. Well, number four, this is the quadratic function. And number five, this is the picture of an exponential function. And a straight line, a straight line, straight line is the picture of what we know is to be the linear function. So we should be able to recognize this by looking at a graph as well. Well, how do we approach this? Also in that first section, we talked about increasing, decreasing, constant. And just a quick review, um, just by showing you here on the screen, if a function is increasing, that means this would be increasing. As we move that direction, the numbers are getting higher. And so this is increasing here. It's constant, it is constant, when it's flat and it's decreasing, it's 
consider decreasing when, as you go out on the x-axis, the y's are decreasing. And so that's how we determine in a graph what we mean by increasing, decreasing, and constant. Number properties. So we also talked about number properties in the first semester. And so number properties, there were three main number properties. There were the distributive property, the associative property, and the commutative property. And the first example that I'm going to show you, if you recall, this represents, yep, you got it, the distributive property. We use it all the time. You're actually distributing the three in here and here, and you're multiplying. You see that multiplication done here and here. And so that's called the distributive property. Quick review. In blue, this example and this example, you can see that in this one you're adding, and over here you're multiplying, but it's the same property. It's the commutative property. And what the community property says is the order of those two numbers, whether you're adding or multiplying, doesn't matter. You get the same answer. Community is just switching. Addition, multiplication, it doesn't matter. You get the same answer. And then finally, the third number property right here, often confused. However, you'll see that the order of the numbers are the same. The order of the numbers are the same. They're equal because as we know, as we know, 9 plus 6 is equal to 4 plus 11. They're both equal to 15. And so the associative property is just moving the set of parentheses. So that's why we call this, this is known as the associative. So the three properties are distributive, commutative, associative. Pause the video, take these examples down in your notes, be ready to use them in your practice today. Okay, adding, subtracting polynomials. There is, uh, here are two examples where I show you the original. So here's the original problem. And then here's the answer. This is the final answer. Here's the original problem problem and here's the final answer. How do we get those answers? Well, it hinges on your idea of do you understand like terms? It was a key concept throughout the first semester. The under the uh, uh, the concept of what is a like term. So let's analyze these two examples and we'll do one on our own. First of all, as you look here, x squared and x squared, those are like terms. So if you add the four and the two, you get the six. Same thing here. If you look at the X and the X, there's really a one there and there's a three there. That's where they get the four. And then of course, this seven and that one, they're considered constant terms. There's no variables to them. So you're just adding seven and eight to get, or seven and one to get eight. Same thing can be uh, looked at with subtraction. So for instance, here's an x cubed and there's an x cubed. Well, there's a one there. Three minus one is your two x cubed. There's an x squared here and here. This is actually a negative one. This is where you have to be careful. And we talk about distributing the negative end because what we really have here is a negative one minus five. This is really a negative five here, if you recall. We like to distribute through, and that's how come they're coming and getting the negative six. Now this is all review. This is actually a homework problem you did in the first semester. And so we finish it out by saying there's no other X term, so that just gets rewritten. Why is it negative? Because of course, this gets distributed through. And then finally, You'll notice that the positive eight and the negative seven, well, again, the negative gets distributed through and you really have eight plus seven, which is 15. 
So let's do an example here below so you can see it in real time. And if you recall, we multiplied by simply using the distributed property. There was also a couple other methods that we used, the stack method, and there was also um, the box method. Um, I'm going to just distribute. I'm going to distribute here, here, and here. And get W to the W squared times W cubed is W to the fifth. W squared times a negative. W is a negative W cubed. And then W squared times one is a positive W squared. Then I'm going to add. I'm going to distribute the one in. wrap up this we also talked about solution sets and solving equations and inequalities when we talk about solution sets we want to be able to describe them in words describe them in set notation and write an equation in some cases if you have the equation uh, graph it in this case they give you the graph so in words here's your solution in words the solution's five, so all reals, all real numbers. Where, in this case, x is equal, the solution, in other words, is equal to Five. All real numbers where x is equal to five. All reals. All real numbers. Such that x is equal to five. And you close out the set notation with that mark again. And then green. Well, it's usually when we're going to write it as an equation write it as uh, an equation or an inequality. In this case, it's just going to be x is equal to 5. So that's what we did uh, in the first semester, being able to write our solution sets in three different ways. Our last thing I want to look at today is just basic operations in solving for uh, equations. And so I, I have a two-step linear equation here. So we're solving for x. So the first step is to add three to both sides and we show this like that. That goes to zero and we're left with four X is equal to 28. Then we divide by four. That reduces to just X is equal to seven and there's our answer. So that concludes a review of really the big ideas from the first semester. And um, you're gonna have a practice sheet and throughout that practice sheet, you're going to have some problems to, to, uh, to complete in class. And then at the 